Now it's time to color our chimpanzee. And you can color the face, the hands and the feet using a brush and uh, powder colors, but you can also do it with airbrush. Airbrush gives you more even um, coverage, uh, so it looks more realistic than when you do it uh, with brushes. But uh, if you don't have an airbrush, don't worry, you can just brush some powder colors on it. And uh, later on, we will also brush all the fur using a brush. And um, I've already mixed some of my colors that I have here. They are all oil soluble colors mixed with alcohol. You can use any non-color alcohol. I have vodka here and I've mixed some of my colors using white, using some uh, skin color, some brown, red, pink and black. It's just, it's everything, it's trial and error and uh, just try, mix it up and see. Use your reference picture. I have two of them. This skin of this one is a little bit more like ours, more reddish, more pinkish. Uh, and this one is more pale. But I need this one because all of the shadows that we are going to apply. And I also have some more pinkish colors over here to make it look a little bit like this and a little bit like it this picture over here. So first of all, what we need to do is to protect the eyes. So pastillage, you can always use this cotton too and uh, just wipe it off any color, but uh, it's better if you protect it. So you don't need to do that. It's very simple. Just use a little piece of fondant and a small piece of cling, of cling wrap. I have my tool over here, silicon tool for molding and sculpting. Then just make similar shape that you have in the eyes, something like that, and put it in a cling wrap Then place it on and just push inside. It takes a little time to do this, but not as much as cleaning up afterwards. You can take smaller piece of fondant, mine is a little too big, just so you can have access for airbrushing. I think this is all right. The second thing I need to tell you is 
Um, why oil soluble colors? Because this paste is chocolate, it's modeling chocolate, it's sculpting paste. And the way you color this one is with oil soluble uh, colors. Gel colors don't work that well. You can also do it with gel colors, uh, with uh, some alcohol. You could do it with water, but the problem is that they don't uh, dry afterwards. And if you use oil soluble colors, powder colors with alcohol, when it's all dry, it's already um, touchable. And from the fondant is a whole another story. We're going to talk about that later. So I think this is all. Um, I'm just going to show you my colors from lightest to darkest, some skin tones. This one is very light. You won't be able to see much of it. It goes somewhere where all the light areas are. I'm gonna try to do that. Then we have a second one. It's more skin tonish. You always have to mix those colors before you use them. They tend to split. This one is a little darker. And then for the shadows, light shadows, This one, as you see on this picture, there are some lighter shadows. And then we have some darker ones. Here, for example. And very dark one. And for all the other shadows, black ones, we're gonna do it using a brush. So first we're going to start with the lightest one. Just put some color in the airbrush. You can use gloves. I always get my hands stained and dirty using airbrush. You always have to try first on a piece of paper so you see how it goes. So you adjust the amount of color you get out. I'll start with very small. Okay. Now, if we look at this picture, we have very light nose and over here mouth lips and the eyebrows and some parts of the ear. So I'm going to try to do that. It's so light, you, can, you can't see it. Almost. Right here. Here. Just apply thin layers and go over if you need to later when it's dry.
The problem with these parted colors is that some of the dust that it's not melted can clog it. You can use some alcohol in a dish. Just pour some alcohol inside. Wipe it off. Try not to leave your airbrush without the color or with the color for too long. I think we are okay now. Let's do it again. Start again. Too much color. Now for the second color. So around here. Just look at the picture and try to replicate.
All right. For the third one. I'm just coloring some of the fur, some of the fur over here on the face, in case I don't color all of it black, if something sees through. If you can see something through, I want it to be skin color. So far, so good. Next one. Now, this is a first shadow color. I'll do the ears first. It's hard to reach some areas because this chimpanzee is small and we'll do all the details with brush.
Now we have our second shadow. Now for our darker color, it's all about layering the colors, as my good friend taught me. She's a makeup artist. And uh, all the skin tones you achieve with layering every tone you see on the picture, for example, from the brightest to the darkest. This is shadow, the darkest one. Give some dark shadow to the parts that touch the floor. I think I'm happy with the result now and uh, everything else we will do with brush to add some more fine lines and then we are going to color the fur. You have to clean your airbrush right away after you use it so the color doesn't set and harden when the alcohol evaporates. 
So I'll just take my time, take it apart and clean it. We've done all the airbrushing and now we're gonna do some fine details so with brush. I'm just gonna take our eye protections out. You can save those colors for some other occasion. Just make sure the alcohol doesn't evaporate. If it does, you can pour in some more and uh, it will come useful probably for some other skin tones. For our details, I'm gonna use some powdered colors, some brown and black. We can clean some of those lines that we covered with color so they become bright again. Just do it with the cotton and some alcohol. Maybe also here, some of light spots. Just mix together some brown and some dark, uh, some black color. Then give this cake, this chimpanzee, some lines where the wrinkles are. If it doesn't stick, and use some alcohol. It doesn't stick. 
So we're going to use this brush. This is just to give some depth to the wrinkles so they are more visible. If you didn't do the wrinkles, you can just throw them on. Now for the fingers, the fingernails, like I said, they look very dirty so we're gonna color, color them a little bit make line where the mouth are give it, give it a shadow You have to know when to stop and I think I'm going to stop now. The only thing left to do is to color our eyes. I will just clean up a little bit, take a small break. Then we're going to color the eyes and then afterwards we're going to color all the fur.